I thought uh, I might just take a minute, and for some of you who are not as familiar, I might give you a little bit about our story uh, and how we came to be here today. Uh, and I can only say that it is all by the extraordinary kindness of God that, uh, that we are here. It, he saw good things in our, in our paths that we didn't see. And if it had been up to us, we wouldn't have done so well, I think. But he made good ways for us, and, uh, and he brought us together. And I may say that I think it's wonderful that you folks adopted us. We were kind of homeless. <laughs> and you, you came along and you adopted us, for which we're tremendously appreciative. But I, I, we, Sharon and I, were from a different tradition, if you will, uh, oneness, many wonderful people, but uh, doctrinally uh, uh, not particularly helpful, I'll put it that way. Uh, it's, uh, it's not Trinitarianism, it's a little different from that, but it takes certain aspects of Trinitarianism and puts them like on steroids. <laughs> so, not only now is Jesus God, but we've decided he's all of God there is. So he is God the Father. He is God the Son. He is God the Holy Spirit. And that's where we get that interesting idea of Jesus only. That was us. We grew up that way. I was third generation one, so was Sharon. And uh, we were just happy, devout, oneness folks going along minding our own business, as it were. But, and we were in a really great oneness church, a lot of good folks out there. And uh, I think uh, we were, I'm happy to say still, we were in uh, a good oneness church. Good teachers, as oneness goes. And, uh, but as we were trucking along, actually, by the kindness of God, I have no doubt at all, he began to just work with me, deal with me, in the scriptures and in our understanding. And I began to realize, wait a minute, the, the Trinitarian folks are missing things, big time. And I began to realize, somehow I felt like we were too. We just weren't getting there in terms of our understanding. Which, if you're a devout oneness person, that's a troubling moment in life to come to, to realize, hey, wait a minute, I think we, we've not been on the right track in important ways. So I still remember as my understanding unfolded by the kindness of God, that uh, I, I went for a walk one day, and I had a talk with myself, sometimes I had to do that, and I began to realize, wait a minute, what I'm recognizing and realizing is true. It is right. It's scripture. And every time I would begin to doubt that, I'd go back and start reading the scriptures again and think, no, there it is. So against all odds, I didn't know anyone who believed the things that I was coming to understand at that time. Didn't know there was anyone, which is kind of a lonesome feeling, I might say. But I did go for a walk one day and I realized I turned a corner which I can never go back on. I've come to an understanding that is richer, truer, better, right. And then I began to have this thought. I thought, wait, wait a minute. What about my wonderful, devout, oneness wife? Because she may not go along with this at all. So I thought about that and I thought, well, even if she doesn't, I'm here. This is right. So I, uh, I just prayed about it, thought about it. Eventually, I remember going in and sitting down in our kitchen. Sharon was cooking around, and I still remember telling her, I said, Sharon, I think we could be wrong. And I still remember her stopping her cooking for a moment, turning around to me and saying, about what? <laughs> <laughs> well, she couldn't have possibly been prepared for what I was about to say. I said about Jesus being God Almighty. Silence. And then she saw that I really meant it and that I was serious. 
And she said, well, if we're wrong, I will understand. And at that moment in time, I came to realize what a wonderful woman of faith I had married. And we're still together to this day. It's one of the But I know that we decided then, we were both working in Nashville, living just outside of Nashville, and we would ride in to work together and back home together, though we worked in separate places. And so we decided, okay, here's what we'll do. We'll just start reading the New Testament. And I still remember Sharon saying, let's read it. And she said, I want to blank my mind of everything else. And if the Trinity is what's there, then that's what I want. Or if the oneness is there, then that's what I want. And she said, but if what you're seeing is there, then I want it. Wow. So each morning and each evening, on the way, and I would drive and she would read, and we just started Matthew 1 and 1 and read. By the way, I'll give you that challenge. I call it the Bible challenge. If you're ever doubt about all this, go back and start reading. See what you find. Set aside what you may have thought or what your tradition may have been, and instead just begin to look at the scriptures for what they are. But as we read it and we went along, it just unfolded all the more for me and it unfolded for her. And it's wonderful. It was a change of life. It changed the whole course of our life. But it was the kindness of God. It was the goodness of God. We weren't smarter than other people or anything, but he was very kind to us. So anyway, uh, I still remember Sharon as we read along. She was saying, but is a good one. This person is pretty big on Acts, which is great, by the way. But she's, she's saying, hi, but when we get to the book of Acts, it's going to be oneness. Because that's what she was going to Thank you. But we got to the book of Acts. And it wasn't oneness. It wasn't Trinity. It was what we came to believe, what we now believe. So why not? So that was an extraordinary moment. But now I had fellowship with the person closest to me in my life, and that was my dear wife, Sharon. And she really got it. As you notice, she's still around, right? <laughs> so she really got this. She, she loves it just as much as I ever could. And, uh, but anyway, it was still tough. We were going to our oldest church, and we began to realize that wasn't going to work anymore. How can two walk together except they be agreed and for us, the differences were great enough that probably we weren't going to be able to continue that way. And when folks found out what we were thinking and saying, let's put it this way, they were less than three. <laughs> and so we eventually decided that two young daughters eventually decided, I'll tell you what, we don't want to go to the Trinitarian Church, but we knew they were on the right track. And then we thought, we're not going to, if we go to another oneness church, it's just going to be more of our problem. And so we said, let's just serve God. We'll go home, take our two daughters, and we'll just read the scriptures, and we'll learn and grow, and that's what we did. I still remember getting a call from a very, very good lady, well intended, who called and said, it was from the church that just left. And she said, let your daughters come. If, if you don't, they don't have the fellowship of the church. They were young. She said, they're going to grow up and they're, they're, you'll lose them. And so we thought, well, okay, think about that. But then we decided, no, we're, we're in this. We've cast our lot. We're going forward with this. And we're going to raise our daughters in this understanding. And Thanks be to God, we did. But rather than losing them, our two daughters came to be some of our grandest supporters in all this. They came to love these things, to believe these things, and they still believe them to this day. Wow, so we had, now I had three others in me. Because when I was walking, that original walk I was telling you about, I thought I could be alone for the rest of my life believing this. But no. It was not the case. But then I had the three people in my life closest to me who were with me, and we just stayed at home and studied and so on. Well, there were others who were a bit vexed. My mom and dad were very devout, almost people. My dad was a very devout 
that one, this fellow, he had taught me scriptures. And he served to knew his Bible, and so he was a minister of such, but he was very, very into the scripture, very good in understanding. And so he was vexed by all of this business of us exiting from the oneness movement. And but he, I give him credit to this day, he began studying and looking into it for himself. And I have to tell you, if you don't want to know the truth, don't do that. <laughs> because if you ever really begin praying and thinking and studying, and you say, oh God, I want to know, I want to understand what is right, look it up. Because it's highly likely that he's going to get that too. And that was one case with my dad. I still remember, I'd go over to his house, he'd be sitting in his chair, with his Bible in his lap and he would be reading. And each time that I would go by, he's been reading something else. So we, we didn't get into a lot of fights and arguments about it all, but he's reading. So he's reading Deuteronomy 18 and that prophet, like unto Moses, that God would raise up from among the brethren. That impressed me. I thought, wow, okay. And then I remember one day I went over and he had his Bible in his lap. He'd been reading uh, over in uh, the the prayer of Jesus, and he's saying, you know, I was reading this, and he said, Jesus is praying, not my will, but thine be done. He said, that's two wills, isn't it? I said, yeah, that it is. That's really amazing. He said, well, you know, if Jesus really is God Almighty, how does he have a different will from himself? So he got to think, anyway, then I, this went on several times, until eventually Dad got it. And for the rest of his life, he was so in love with this truth and understanding. Beautiful. And mom also. And uh, so I think then uh, later on, I had a brother and a wonderful sister-in-law, their children. Anyway, all of a sudden, our little home get-together fellowship with me and my three family members was turning into a little home fellowship period. And others who were interested, we never set out to start a church, never interested in trying to do that. We just wanted to grow and learn in the things that God had been giving to us. So I still remember, as God added folks along the way, we had a, a nice fellowship there. And then something else important happened. Our two daughters were growing up, so you can see we were in this mode for some years. And... Then uh, our youngest daughter, she found uh, a, a Methodist guy. And she implored him to consider the scriptures. And so he did. Another good guy. Thank God for the Methodists. So we have this, but he's coming along and he's looking into the scriptures and he's studying and he's asking questions. Wow, so that's the next addition to my fellowship. I thought I was going to be alone. But no, here comes a new son-in-law. That son-in-law, now, today, these years later, is my pastor, Pastor Moore. And he's now throwing his hand in with you guys. It's amazing. He's a wonderful guy. And he loves these truths. He's absorbed them all like a sponge for the years. And he would stand for these truths and hold to these truths. It's amazing. It's beautiful. So, anyway, it was still a little bit lonely out there. Feeling like, are we crazy? We're the only people that, that think this or believe this. And I still remember in the midst of that, my dad, Pastor Mark was mentioning this Sunday morning, but my dad, was reading and he came across that scripture, the Psalm last night, 1 John 1 and 7. For if we walk, it's conditional, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then have we fellowship one with another. And Dan hit something there. He said, you know, he said, fellowship isn't really a matter of our choice. He said, fellowship is a matter of joining with those who are walking in light. God doesn't just let you decide, oh, you know what we're going to do. Walk in the light as he is in the light. Then have we 
fellowship one with another. And somehow that brought Dad to peace and said, well, okay, if we're the only poor people on earth, or rich people, depending on how you look at it, who understand and believe these things about who Jesus is. And so, by the way, we've been fortunate to be with a group who understood this way to the dead. That was very much, it was a great advantage to us back before. That, that was before we broke away for other reasons. But with Mark in hand then, we just carried on and I found out after a while that we had other additions. Like, now, Mark and Becky, we have children. My They love God. They love your own. And if you've met them, you realize they are so robust in their understanding of these things. I think each one of them should count for at least two people. <laughs> So my fellowship is growing, right? I started out thinking I may be alone in all of this. And it turns out I had my precious family, friends and others who joined us because they saw it too. Some of those people who joined us way back then, some have died. Others are still with us to this day. The truth is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Well, then there is another phase of things that developed that was exciting. I still remember our older daughter, our oldest daughter. She had some physical problems. She went to the hospital anyway. Uh, I uh, was in the waiting room in the hospital. And uh, Sharon was with our daughter. But I went over and I going to read something to get all this off my mind. I'll just read something I'll go over there. And here is a copy of the last thing you'd ever expect to find in a hospital waiting room. A copy of Biblical Archaeology Review. <laughs> and I thought, well, okay, that's interesting. So I took that and I sat down and I started perusing it. And then I came across this ad. There was this book company in California. And they were advertising these books. And one of the books was by this Anthony guy. <laughs> and it was what we since have come to call the Trinity book. <laughs> but but it's the book that we found that says, you know, the Trinity, Christianity, self-inflicted wound. Wow. I thought, well, that sounds interesting because we're not Trinitarian. Don't know nothing about this guy. But I thought, hmm, well, I'll make a note. Fence were developing. Actually, our daughter had a more severe problem. And so I just wound up making a note, putting it in my pocket. And I thought, someday I might check into that a little bit. Well, and I think it was maybe two or three months later that I got back to that. I thought, I need to order that book. I saw it came across my head. I need to order that book. So I ordered the book, got it in. I was busy, and I'm not a voracious reader or anything like that. And Pastor Mark, son of Mark, he, he can read something while I'm just thinking about it. And so I thought, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to give it to him. I'll palm it off on him. He'll read it and tell me what's in it. And I thought that was exciting. So anyway, I did, and within a couple of days, he's back having devoured the old book. But I will never forget the look of amazement on his face when Mark came to me and he said, Dan, he said, you're not going to believe this. He said, this guy's got it. And I'm saying, he's got it? And he said, he's got it. He said, he is exactly where we're at in our understanding of this thing. Probably just a, a out of touch academic <laughs> who's done this thing and, and you know, so we've got a book and now whatever. But we got to look into it a little bit more and Pastor Mark again. Not really a pastor at that time, but Mark again got to search on the internet, dug him out. And I still remember him taking me by the shoulders one day and taking me in and setting me down to a computer. And he said, Look at this. He had found you all. <laughs> wow. So I still remember the, the shock of all, after all those years finding others that believe this. Like I said, it was kind of lonely out there. <laughs> but 
Anyway, so we got in touch with Anthony, got in touch with the school, and Anthony immediately by his great kindness and the blessings of God in him toward us. So he, he immediately came to Nashville. I was saying he did a short time after that. And I still remember having him in our home and spending a few days, and it was absolutely like breathing fresh air. It was wonderful. And we enjoyed it so much. Have you ever seen a situation where you, you met someone and you realize your life has now changed forever? That was that. So it was wonderful. I still remember the first time I ever met Anthony. And this, this poor fellow of great sensibilities and all that. Anyway, we had him staying at, I think, Holiday Inn in our community there, just north of Nashville. <laughs> And I still remember the first time I ever walked into his room because he had just got situated in there. Walked into his room and in traditional Tennessee style, watch out for this, I gave him a big old bear hug. <laughs> in retrospect, I'm surprised he didn't grab his hat and coat and head back for Georgia. <laughs> it was really, but I will never forget. The reason being, I, he can't believe then how much and still how much that moment meant to me to find this guy, not because he was an author, not because he was whatever he was otherwise, but because he loved these things that we too had come to love. So we were so humbled and so moved to find y'all. And I think the following May, whenever it had been April in those days, I'm not sure. We went to the theological conference in Atlanta. And I've never missed a theological conference since. 17 years. What do you think? That's pretty good. So I may have some beauty, you know, but so and many other conferences and so on. It was really amazing, wonderful, and beautiful to meet you good people. And over these last few years, I've spoken about y'all to many others. And always, always, I begin with these words. They are good people. And I say that because I really believe it. That's how I have found it. <coughs> y'all have been so kind to us. As I say, you adopted us when we were homeless. You've come to mean so much to us. And we have grown by you, been benefited by you, and you took us in and treated us as your own. We love you for that. We thank you for that. But I will say, the root, the, the truth, I will put it that way, that brought us and attracted us to you was great. And it was that truth. It wasn't, I mean, if you want to just find fellowship, you can find fellowship all kinds of places of different sorts. You can find, you know, fellowship hall kind of fellowship. Not anywhere. But remember 1 John 1 and 7, John is saying, if we walk in the truth, we walk in the light, I, want, I think the one and the same. Remember that, you know, David said, uh, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. But I think that light is the word of God. But if we walk in the light, if we walk in the truth, then have we fellowship one with another. And we did. I'm amazed that we came to know so many other people. All of a sudden I began to realize there were going to be a lot of Rosses in my life. <laughs> so we had Ken Ross who became a wonderful friend and sheriff. And we spent nights in their home and fellowship with them, the right kind of fellowship. Fellowship and love of the truth. And then we met Scott. Wow, what a force he was. And here is now other Rosses. <laughs> we have Seth Ross again in our lives and in our home and him and his family. So how precious is all that? And then also going to say it goes on and on. Joe and Rebecca Martin become our dear, dear friends. Uh, Dennis and Rachel Paul. It goes on. I can just go around this room and I can't tell you how much 
All of you have come to me to us. But I will say this. If I can say anything about it all, it would be this. The thing that drew us to you, it was your love, it was your kindness, but it was that word. And we went without fellowship in a larger sense for many years, about 20 years, before we found you, or you found us, however it worked, but God brought us together. And for that, Work and for your stand for that work, which I'm sure it's not always been easy for a different one, but for that we love you, and for that we are here, and that is why that now formally you adopted us, but it, but I think we are now really part of you, as I said. And just yesterday, now you can't get rid of us. <laughs> We're really formal family, so you, you're going to have to put up with us. I do know this. A scripture that helped me along the way at times was, through those earlier years, was by the truth and sell it by. And I did come to believe this, and I believe it's true for all of us. <sighs> The person who sells the truth to buy fellowship soon, if it's biblical truth, I'll put it that way, the person who sells biblical truth to buy fellowship soon will not have biblical truth nor biblical fellowship. Because biblical fellowship is based on light and truth, isn't it? Not just you know, fellowship hall kind of get together and have a great all that's fine too and that's great. But the the central issue is the light and the truth of God. We love y'all. Y'all have been wonderfully kind to us. I can't tell you how much that means to us. Every one of you. And we're just happy to be here. God bless you all. Thank you very much.